love the supernatural. They believe in the supernatural. And children at a certain age can distinguish between what is not real and what's real in, in the supernatural realm. They know. They have a natural intuitive sense. of, And they also know purpose. Fakhruddin al-Razi said, if you want to prove that the human by his nature believes in causation, take an infant before it has any aqal and just hide somewhere and throw a rock. In, and, and over the head of the child and when the rock drops you watch what the baby will do it's going to look back it doesn't just assume the rock popped into existence why doesn't it make that assumption why doesn't it just assume it came out of nothing right because this is what they're telling us now this all came out of nothing why doesn't it make that assumption because it's completely counterintuitive to the fitrah it knows that that rock had a source. And then if it can crawl, it will start crawling looking for where it came from. This is what a little baby will do before it has any intellect. So the human being is in this body and the body by its nature, because of these senses, it becomes overwhelmed by the sensory experience. So the little infant is, even though you will watch with infants, because they're still in the, 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 the ruh is still very prominent and strong in the, in the infant when it's, when it's a suckling. So you will see, especially in the first year, they will go into ecstatic states. They will often look around you. They won't look at you. They look around you. Little, little infants. Uh, Abd al-Aziz al said that the language they speak is Syrianiya. When they, the, what they call the babbling of babes. When they start doing the ba ba bu bu and doing these things, uh, Sidi Abdul Aziz the Baq said it's actually a, a language from, from Syrianiya, which is a language the angels know, speak. I mean, Allahu Alam, but this is one of the people of Ma'rifa, this is what he said. And, uh, and he actually said that bu bu means something harmful in Syrianiya. So little babies will often call something, in, in all different languages they'll say bu bu or bu bu because it's harmful. So the, the child will still have these experiences, but then it moves out of that and into this sensory world. And then the purpose of the parents is to remind the child. And this is why the very first thing that you do is you give the adhan and you give the shahada and then you give them something sweet, the date or honey on the tongue, because it's the, the wa'ad, Right? You give them the tathkir and then you give them the wa'ad. You, you let them take the first thing they experience in the world is hearing what, they, what their souls already know. And then you give them the sweet taste to remind them the reward of maintaining that truth. So they know the child, you're not doing, if the Prophet would not order us to do anything meaningless. It's impossible. He cannot tell us to do something that is uh, like batil. Impossible. Everything that he guides us to is haq. It's truth. And so the tambih of the child is because the soul is what's being, it's what's being spoken to. Not the baby. The baby is, is flesh and blood. But the soul now has access to these, to these senses. You see, because the soul has been embodied. And so the hearing, the sight, all of these things affect the soul. And this is why what you look at will affect you. What you hear will affect your soul. It affects your soul. Inna sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada kullu ula'ika kana anhu mas'ula. Your hearing, your sound, your sight, and your heart, right? Your heart, the ma'rifah, the consciousness, your consciousness. All of these the human being is responsible for. Because at the root of the human being is consciousness. And your consciousness, is, you have always had it. You had it when you were a child. You have it when you're in a, a, a somebody la qadr Allah. When, you, when people go into comas, the consciousness is there. It's always present. It's always present. The consciousness is always present. And, and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has he's given us these these experiences during life to remind us. And this is why things will happen to you in life. It's inevitable. There will be things that will happen to you in life that indicate the unseen realm. You'll remember. 
and, and people who, who have a frame of reference, who have the knowledge of the prophets, they have the wiratha, they know what to make of these things. The people that don't will be struck by them. They'll often be amazed by them. Coincidences, synchronicities, they'll be like Jung. Jung was very struck by all these things that would happen to him. And he knew something supernatural was happening, but he didn't know what it was, because he didn't have a science. And this is where the Muslims are. We are so lucky. We're so fortunate that Allah has given us uh, knowledge of these things. And other people, really, they've lost them. They had them, but they've lost them. This is the last uh, religion standing that has a, a complete cosmology that has not been polluted or tainted by uh, other things, really. It's all there in Islam. And so this, the consciousness that Allah has given you, it's embodied in this sensory experience. And so you have what is latafa and kathafa. You have the subtle body, right, which is this latif body. And then you have the kathif body, the material body. And, and these, these are, Imam Madik said, it's like the water in the twig. You know, it's like the water in the twig. In other words, the ruh is in your body. It, we're not dualist in that way, and we believe in the bodily resurrection, so we don't, we don't separate the two in that way that is often done in, in Western civilization. That, that the, you cannot separate these two in that way. They're, and this is why our, part of our ibadah is in our bodies. This is why we honor our bodies. Even after you die, you, you don't burn the body, like in some traditions. You don't, also the Prophet... Uh, prohibited harming bodies and then the bodies of the awliya why do they not they're incorruptible why why is that why do why are their bodies incorruptible they don't they don't uh, they're not eaten by the earth and we know incorruptibles exist this is a scientific you can look this up on the internet